Terry Morin and the Hoosiers have added a big name figuratively and literally from the transfer portal to the roster and a player that was freshman of the year in her conference last season. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. You are locked on Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. And we're part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Free and available anywhere you guys listen to podcasts, including over on YouTube. Big thanks to you guys for making us your first listen every day. I'm your host as always, Jacob Rude. want to give a shout out to FanDuel, the sponsor of today's episode. Official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. We've talked a lot about the IU men's basketball team and their activity in the transfer portal. The women's team has kind of sat off to the side and not really done a whole lot until Monday when they added, like I said, a big name figuratively and literally uh, to their team for the upcoming season. The Hoosiers added Sharnice Curry Jelks from UT Martin. Now I'm not going to expect many of you to know UT Martin. I didn't know UT Martin. I did some uh, digging around, some looking, some reading of some stories on Monday after this was announced. Talia Goodman uh, had the report first and then Curry Jelks uh, announced it on her Twitter or her Instagram Uh, later on in the evening. So this is confirmed. Uh, There isn't a ton of information, as you can kind of imagine, from a player that went to UT Martin. Uh, We we have her stats. We have her accolades. We don't have a ton of kind of stories and information about her. Talia Goodman did uh, quote an assistant who had watched her play, uh, said, quote, she's a pretty athletic five slash four moves well can score inside developing her outside game rebounds at a high level now she's played one year of basketball and it was already a pretty uh i don't want to say storied but she racked up the award she was the ohio valley conference freshman of the year the ovc freshman of the year Uh, she was the nine time ovc freshman of the week Twice was the player of the week, was on the all OVC first team as well, uh, was also newcomer of the year, just a, a boatload of awards she took in this one, all freshman team as well, obviously. So t- statistically last season, she averaged 15.2 points, 6.9 rebounds, uh, basically an assist a game a block a game, 1.4 steals. She's listed at 6'2", a forward. She shot 53.9% from the field uh, on 12 shots per game, played 28 games, started 26 of them. She tried a little bit of outside shooting, but 5 of 21, just 23.8%. It's definitely growing. I think I've mentioned this before. For me, typically a good indicator is how well you shoot at the free throw line. She was 62 of 84, which is 73.8%, which is good for a big and someone that is probably typically drawing fouls. So it it's a good pickup for the Hoosiers. It, It adds size to the front court, which I think was probably the biggest weakness, if there was any, on this team is having kind of a power forward forward type that can come in and spell Mackenzie Holmes. Lily Meister looks like someone that can do that, and I don't know that it's mutually exclusive that it has to be either Curry Jelks or Meister. If if the Hoosiers believe that Curry Jelks' is outside game is improving and she's able to, to space the floor a little bit, then you can play a little bit of both, but this adds another uh, player to that front court, a proven player, even if it is in the OVC, 
you're taking one of the best players in the OVC last year and adding them to your roster, which is a win. Uh, there, there isn't really any other way to look around that. You're taking uh, a, a top player and adding them to your roster. So uh, really good from her. If she can add something to her perimeter game and play a little more outside in, then even better because then she's able to play in different kinds of lineups with different players in the front court. You're able to do different kinds of things. But at the very least, she's someone that can score effectively in the post, uh, take some of that, maybe the minutes and the wear and tear off Mackenzie Holmes. Uh, she obviously has that knee injury that took her out for a chunk of the season two years ago. This past season, it was a factor late in the year. So if you're able to keep some minutes off of her during the regular season, so that she's ready to go in the postseason. Uh, that feels like at least partially what this move is about. Um, I mean, outright, she's just a good player, so I, I don't think that it's entirely what they were looking to do. But it certainly helps that that she is someone that can spell Mackenzie Holmes, and you're not so reliant on her to carry this team because IU didn't have a lot of perimeter talent we can look at the scholarship situation because it is interesting to note uh just what what this kind of sophomore class is uh, obviously after i mean she was freshman of the year so uh curry jelks is coming in as a sophomore this upcoming season and that's a very interesting sophomore class that you can look at it's a a balanced class that five deep is something that can kind of be the base of this team moving forward. All of them played some type of role or well, the four returning played some type of role this past season. Bargesser got minutes throughout Garzon. Obviously it was incredible started all that fantastic stuff. Sandvi stepped in when Grace Berger went down, maybe the more most spotty of the minutes, uh, but she contributed, and I would imagine her to have a bigger role this season. Lily Meister, we saw in the tournament itself, performed well in that opening round. And then you're adding another big that was the freshman of the year last season. So that's a group that, uh, I mean, realistically, you could almost play together on the floor. It's a couple guards, a forward, and a couple bigs. But it's a group that can kind of stabilize you for the years going forward as the the McKinsey Holmes, the Scalias, uh, the Chloe Moore McNeils, the Sydney Parishes, as they all eventually kind of phase out, it's this group that can carry you forward. So I, I like this sophomore group. Obviously, the Hoosiers, it's 15 scholarships in women's basketball. The Hoosiers have three more. I don't know that they will add anybody else. Uh, outside of maybe just some proven outside shooting or a wing, there aren't really any other holes on this team. They, they have the pieces in place. We, we talked about it earlier in the off season that I'm, I'm a little surprised they added anybody because it certainly felt like they just were going to sit pat, which wasn't a, an awful thing. I'm glad if they added anything, it was a big, because I think that was, as we discussed their biggest need, but it's a, it's a big get, I think for the Hoosiers to, to, ultimately get someone that was as good as Curry Jelks was last season is a impressive uh, get for them or her best game of the season. She didn't really play at UT Martin against anyone particularly really good. Uh, relatively speaking, Southeast Missouri state, she dropped 30 points and 13 rebounds on had 26 points at Evansville, 26, uh, against SIU Edwardsville, 27 against Tennessee State, 25 in their conference tourney loss. Uh, so she was really, as the season got along, you can look at her game logs and she got better and better, which you would expect from a freshman. Uh, she, 19 of her 28 games, she shot 50% or above. So efficient as well. It's a good ad, and I think it'll help the Hoosiers this upcoming season with, with some more front court depth and, and an important piece for this team potentially moving into the future. On the men's basketball side, we learned a uh, little bit more about IU's schedule 
but something that isn't on the schedule. We'll talk more in detail about that here in a few moments. First, let's talk about FanDuel. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Even those of you that don't like the NBA and tell me to stop talking about it, they're very likely going to be two Hoosiers in the NBA Finals. I'm not going to stop talking about it in that regard. And you guys should watch it. It's NBA Finals are always compelling television. Uh, you can also go to FanDuel and bet on the games. And even if you're wrong, you get that uh, – no sweat first bet. So there's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit fanduelcom slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars. That's fanduelcom slash locked on FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day, every airs. I won't keep teasing it, but we will do season recaps. Uh, this week as news dictates or the lack of news dictates. Uh, so be prepared for that. But we had news on Monday. We we mentioned the, the transfer on the women's side. The men's side, the Gavit game schedule was announced. It actually wasn't announced. John Rothstein reported on it. It does not include Indiana, which is a little bit of a surprise, maybe not so much. Um, the, the I, I could rattle off them. Xavier at Purdue is going to be an interesting one. Uh, Michigan State is also not playing in it. Michigan at St. John's, uh, Iowa at Creighton, Marquette at Illinois. That'll be a fun uh, kind of regional close game. Maryland and Villanova, Butler, Michigan, Butler and Michigan State are uh, are playing. I read that wrong. Uh, Georgetown, Rutgers, and Wisconsin Providence. So it's surprising, not surprising. I just kind of assumed Indiana would be involved because they're just one of the marquee names. At the same time, uh, Indiana has the most appearances of any Big Ten team in the Gavit game. So it's maybe not a surprise in that regard that they aren't going to play in them. I believe as the current contract is, this is the last year for the Gavit games, unless they extend them. I wouldn't, I could see it going either way. I mean, it, it's a, it's a good game, but the scheduling's a bit wonky with not having the same amount of teams in each conference. So I don't know about that, but the Hoosiers ultimately won't be in this year. Even if it was, or wasn't a surprise, I think a lot of us were kind of, at least I did, I kind of penciled that game into the schedule. So it's interesting now because uh, that means the Hoosiers have room for a, I don't want to say a marquee game, kind of a mid-marquee game, a, a matchup uh, with a stronger opponent. I don't know that they're going to necessarily add a Arizona or something like that in this spot, but you can add a, a, a strong conf or opponent from a different conference Maybe on that note, uh, Micah Shrewsbury obviously moved to um, Notre Dame from Penn State. He appeared on uh, Rothstein's podcast on Monday and made some interesting comments about wanting to do things uh, in terms of in-state with Indiana and Purdue. Here's his uh, quote he had on. It's on the idea of playing a tournament with in-state teams, the Crossroads Classic. Uh, here's his quote. quote uh, Showcasing our team within the state is something that I like to do, whether that's playing a game in Indianapolis or playing home and homes with other teams in the state. That's really important for us. We're going to recruit the state of Indiana. There are really good players here. This is our home. Being able to play in-state and have some opportunities is something we're looking forward to. I haven't beaten Coach Matt Painter. Uh, Playing Purdue is not at the top of my list of things that I want to go and do right away. Maybe the other teams, if they want to play it, it's interesting. We have a great friendship. He's one of the guys that I really lean on. I'd be honored to play them, Indiana, and Butler, whoever it may be. We want to showcase Notre Dame basketball in the state of Indiana. 
the Crossroads Classic isn't coming back, at least not the version that includes IU. It doesn't benefit IU. We've had that discussion. Does a home and home with Notre Dame benefit IU? I'm mixed on it. It wouldn't be my first choice necessarily. Um, if Notre Dame becomes more relevant under Micah Shrewsbury, maybe. Uh, it, it still feels like a lot of these in-state games, it feels kind of like a lose-lose with Indiana. There's a little bit of arrogance that goes on with this, but Indiana's kind of viewed as the the big team in the state. So if you go to Notre Dame and you beat them, you were supposed to beat them. If you go to Notre Dame and lose and you kind of have egg on your face, should that matter? There's a pretty strong argument it shouldn't. Uh, but I don't know that that is the matchup I'd be seeking out. But again, Notre Dame is kind of that quality level I think the Hoosiers should be looking at in replace of the Gavit games if they are going to play a game kind of in that span. Does does Notre Dame make sense? Do you guys want to see the Hoosiers play Notre Dame? Let me know in the comments below. I'm not crazy about it right now. Um, if they do, I'd rather do it as a home and home. I I mean, we played Indianapolis. I, I just want more true road games on the schedule. Like, I think that really tests a team and matters. And I'm not crazy about the neutral site games, especially if you're playing a, a decent opponent. If you're playing Miami of Ohio at Indianapolis, I understand what's going on there but if we're playing Notre Dame just do it at a, as a home and home I would much rather that personally but let me know what you guys think in the comments below should we play Notre Dame where should we play them at if so if not them who should the Hoosiers look to add as a non-conference game to replace the Gavit games uh, we can discuss some of the scheduling options in a show later this summer as well Athlon Sports released they're Big Ten, all Big Ten teams. They have like 5 million teams. Naturally, there are some IU players on them, but there's a player on the first team. I'm sure you guys can guess who it is. We'll talk about what IU players are featured and where here in a moment. So Athlon Sports, one of, my, one of the funniest traditions is they're all conference teams. Uh, they were released on Monday morning. Monday afternoon, somewhere around then. Funniest tradition is because they have four all-conference teams, offense and defense, with special teams and with extra positions built in. It's almost more notable if you don't make an all-conference team than if you do. Nonetheless, this is Indiana. They had six people featured on these all-conference teams. Tops amongst them, this isn't going to shock you, is Jalen Lucas, who was listed as the first team kick returner. Uh, he's been an All-American in a number of places preseason. I haven't dove too deep into that yet because it's May. I don't think preseason All-Americans should come out in May. Some of them have, but eventually we'll dive deeper and look at all of them he's on. But nonetheless... He is the Athlon first team all Big Ten specialist kick returner. There's a mouthful for you. Not shocking. He's going to be that everywhere. He's going to have a lot of awards this preseason and a lot of hype that probably deserved, but hopefully uh, something he can make good on. IU did have a second team honoree as well. Aaron Casey, second team defense at linebacker. It's four linebackers per team. So he's top eight linebackers in the conference, which, I mean, that's a that's a feat if you're with Penn State's and Ohio State's and Michigan's and whatnot. Being one of the best linebackers in the Big Ten is noteworthy, and Aaron Casey deserves it. He's going to be – he's kind of going to step into that uh, – that void left by Cam Jones and Taiwan Mullen in terms of leadership on this unit this upcoming season. And he's going to have to kind of step up his impact and his production as well to try to help replace Cam Jones. He got a dry run of it of sorts in the second half of last season, but uh, he's going to have certainly a really big role this season to anchor that defense moving forward. 
Third team all offense, Cam Camper, uh, wide receiver. I, I'm pleasantly surprised, I should say, that he's getting as much recognition as he is. He was really good last year until he had the knee injury that ended his season. If not for that, there was probably an argument for him to be first team all Big Ten. He was that good as a wide receiver. I don't know that he would have got it because it's Indiana, but nonetheless, for him to be a third team preseason, uh, all all conference wide receiver, how, whatever mouthful you want to delegate this as, for him to receive this recognition, especially coming off a, an injury, is impressive. Hopefully he'll be ready and something close to, to full strength by the start of the season because – He's really good, and the Hoosiers. I mean, the Hoosiers need really good players on the field, uh, but he's really good and an exciting player to watch. And seems like a, a gem that the Hoosiers were able to find uh, last year in the transfer portal. We talked about what IU football is doing in the transfer portal recently as well. You guys can go check out that. Uh, I believe we did it on maybe Friday's episode. Uh, the the shows are kind of blending together now, but. Uh, one of the recent episodes we talked about IU football recruiting. Third team all defense. This is an interesting name as well. Andre Carter, defensive lineman. He has not played a stat, snap in the Big Ten yet, and he has third team all defense honors. We've talked a lot about him and the praise and credit he's getting in, well, was getting, I should say, in spring practice and uh, leading through the spring game. So. That certainly has been notable enough for Athlon to acknowledge him, recognize him. Again, once you kind of get into third teams, like it's, I don't want to negate any of these guys, but it does feel kind of silly. Like third team, all preseason. I think first team's probably enough, maybe a second team. After that, it feels like you're just kind of pulling names out of a hat and. Fair enough. Andre Carter, though, I think is going to be really good. And I think at season's end, he will be on one of those first or second teams, assuming he stays healthy, because it, he seems like someone who's going to be that good. James Evan is third team specialist as a punter. He did it a lot last year. Uh, um, I don't know if how often it's a good thing to have your punter receive recognition, because ideally you don't want him on the field much. Uh, but James Evans was good last season and as best he could helped out the Hoosiers. I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword when it comes to punters uh, because it's typically not a good thing if they're on the field, but if they're able to switch the field, stuff like that, it's helpful. It didn't help the Hoosiers in the big run, but I, it wasn't his fault. He was good last season. And to wrap it up, fourth team offense is Matthew Bedford. Offensive lineman. The offensive line has had a lot of focus. There are six offensive linemen recognized per uh, per team, or it looks like four in the first two, six in the final two. Like it's an absurd amount. I don't even really know how much to put into that because that means you're a top like twenty five lineman in the conference. I would hope Indiana would have one, but. That offensive line is certainly going to have a lot of focus on them. Matthew Bedford's the best of the bunch. And if he's able to step up and solidify that line, that'll go a long way in helping the Hoosiers just have something competent on that offensive line this season. That's that's all I wanted. I don't even need good necessarily. They just weren't haven't been competent for much of the last two years. So Give me that as a bottom line, and I will be pleasantly surprised, I guess. I will be pleased, if nothing else. So there's your all Big Ten teams. You guys can go take a look at them. As I said, it's a little silly after about the second team and the amount of names listed. J.J. McCarthy is your first-team quarterback. Blake Corm at running back. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, as your wide receiver. Just a lot of the the names you would expect to hear at the top of this. Uh, Talia Tagovailoa is the second team quarterback. He was good last season. We'll see if he can keep it up, but it's back-to-back -back seasons. He's been good. So I don't know why he wouldn't 
Kyle McCord of Ohio State's a third team quarterback, and Drew Allaire from Penn State's fourth team. Those guys have barely played. That probably tells you a lot about the quarterback position in the Big Ten this year. But maybe Taven Jackson can jump out and have a huge season if he even earns a starting spot. It'll be an interesting season. We'll talk about IU football later on in the summer, but I wanted to get that out there because there were Hoosiers recognized no matter how wild it is. There's a fourth team preseason, all Big Ten team. (laughs) Thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. We will be back this week to continue season recaps and any other transfer news that might break throughout the season. Follow us on Twitter if you have not already. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a rating and review. All of that great stuff. But most importantly, guys, I hope you all have a terrific Tuesday. And as always, LEO.